Hello there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I want to show you how to create a crushed foil effect from scratch inside of Photoshop. Okay, so we're going to make this a width of 3000 and a height of 3000 and we're going to be using a resolution of 72. You can definitely take it up to 300 if you want to print this or if you want a higher resolution image, uh, but just to make this a little bit faster, I'm gonna keep it at a 72 resolution for digital. And then we're gonna be working in RGB color mode. We're gonna click create. And with our white canvas, uh, we're gonna make sure that we have our default here. Just make sure to click on uh, this little icon and it'll bring back your defaults if you had other colors in there. And then we're going to be using this gradient tool right here. If it's not showing up for you, just hold it down and the little fly out will come up and then you can choose gradient tool from there. Once you have that chosen, you'll come up here to the top and you're going to get all of these options. You need to make sure that you have this diamond gradient selected and that you're working in difference mode. So I believe the default is going to be normal. You need to just click on that drop down menu and bring it all the way down to difference. And your opacity and everything else is just fine the way it is. Uh, one other thing that I will change is I want my base to be black, not white. So I'm gonna press the letter X on my keyboard just to switch those two. And then I'm just gonna come to the canvas and start adding small strokes all over this canvas. So you can start with bigger ones and then get smaller as you go, but um, you're just gonna keep adding all of these gradients until you have something that you're happy with. So I'm gonna keep on doing this. It's gonna take a little bit of patience um, to get all of these on here, but the final effect is gonna be well worth it. So we'll go ahead and keep going with this. Okay, so this is the final gradient that I created. You can see that I have a whole bunch of small little gradients in here, uh, up here in this area and around. And I did leave some spots really big, like this area right here, here, and then up right around here. These areas aren't gonna look as crushed as say this area right here. Um, that has a lot of gradients. You will have some spots and depends. this all depends on how you want it to look. If you want it to have a whole bunch of fine crushed uh, foiled look and you don't want any of the, the smoother sections like what we'll probably get right here, then just go ahead and go back in and, and add more gradients. So the key to getting the crushed part is to have all of these fine little gradients here versus these big sections right here. So once we have this up, we're going to go over to uh, filter and we'll go to filter gallery. Skip over this one. This is just a quick shortcut to the last filter we used. We're not going to do that. We're going to go here to filter gallery and that's going to open up the filters. We're going to come here to this sketch section and we're going to choose Chrome. Now in Chrome, our detail is going to be really low. We don't need much more detail than this. If we had any more, it would just look like a big mess. So we're going to keep our detail fairly low and our smooth smoothness pretty low as well. And I'm going to back this out so you can see it. Uh, but this is what it's going to look like. So we're going to click OK. Now I just wanted to show you these sections. This is what I was talking about. So you'll have these bigger areas that look like they weren't crushed as much as maybe this area, this up here, and uh, some of this stuff down here. This look depends entirely on you. If you want larger areas, um, showing like this or if you want it all to look completely crushed. Now you can stop here if you like this high gloss look but for this one we're going to take it one step further just to give you a second option. So we're going to go back in once we have that first filter done. We're going to go back to filter, filter gallery. This time we're going to be adding a bass relief and for this one our detail is going to be pretty high. Um, I have it set to nine and my smoothness is really low. 
Um, but you might want to set your detail even higher depending on how much you have going on. We can add a little bit more detail. So I'm going to leave mine at 12 and my smoothness I just brought all the way down to 1. You can bring it up a little bit, but I wouldn't bring that up too much. It's just going to make it more fuzzy and you want this to be crisp. So we're going to leave it just as it is right there and I'm going to click OK. And this is our um, aluminum foil. So what it looks like is that we crushed it and then just opened it up and flattened it out. And that's the look that I'm going for. Uh, that's why I left this area right here so big so you can see some areas that didn't get crushed as much as maybe this area did uh, or this up here. So once you have that, you can save this as a JPEG file. We're gonna, you can go up to File, Export, Quick Export as a PNG, or you can um, save it as a JPEG as well. If you uh, go here to Legacy, and it'll, you'll get that option. Let me open that up. Uh, but if you come up here to the presets, you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG file. I highly recommend that you keep a copy of it in JPEG or PNG format. And then uh, a JPEG is going to be a lot smaller file though, so just keep that in mind. If you'd also like to keep this as a pattern on your computer, you can go to here to edit. And then come all the way right here to define pattern. And this is going to be untitled 1PSD, we're going to name it uh, Crushed Foil. Click OK. So we just saved that pattern to our computer as crushed foil. You can go into presets and maybe I'll do another uh, video on that later. But if you go into presets to the file manager, you can export that and save it for later. Otherwise, just save this as a JPEG. And if you ever want to add it back in, if you lose it for some reason, then you can actually just open up the JPEG and do the same thing that we just did and add it back into your patterns. So the next thing I want to show you is how to change the color of this. So Valentine's Day is coming up, so pink foil um, is a good look. And then also Easter is, is just a few months away as well. So pastel colors look great with foil like this. And let me show you one way how to do that. You can do that here using the solid color. And I'm going to choose a light pink, click OK. Now this right here is right over the top of our aluminum foil. And I'm just going to change the mode here to color. Definitely stick with the pastels, it looks a lot better. You can make gold as well. And uh, really any pastel color is going to look just beautiful uh, in this crushed foil. So I'm going to click OK. I want to show you another way to do this. So we're going to trash that. And then we're going to go back here to the adjustment layers. And we're going to choose, we're going to go all the way down and choose hue and saturation. This is another way to change the color of your layer. Um, the only thing that with this where you might have an issue is if you start moving this around, you'll notice that it doesn't change. That's because you need to make sure that colorize is checked off. Make sure that you have that checked in order to be able to change your color. So we'll um, just kind of go through these. And this is actually a lot faster and easier to do this way. But if you already know your specific color, then you can just go ahead and add a solid color over top and change the mode to color. So that's how that works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that also. And I'm gonna create a new layer here um, and command and delete uh, to fill that with black. And I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to show you how to add that to text. So we're going to add some text here. And uh, using the words crushed foil, I'm going to bring that over here and make it bigger. 
Let me bring that down a little bit. Okay, so now that I have my letters, uh, what I'm gonna do is come up to that layer, uh, make sure that it's selected, and then I'm not gonna click here in the thumbnail or on the letter or on the name of the layer. I'm gonna click somewhere out here, just double click, and that's gonna bring your layer styles up. And what I'm going to do is add a pattern overlay. So this is the pattern that I had installed. In fact, I have it in there twice. I had made one earlier and I'm, uh, this is the one that we just created right now. So uh, I'm going to use that one. And this is what it looks like. So you can see it's a very interesting detailed look for your lettering. You can uh, bring down, this is why I like to use uh, a pattern versus just you or, you know masking the text with the actual JPEG image because you get all of this, all of these other options here um, that you wouldn't get with that. Now the only one thing uh, I've noticed is that if you're going to scale it to make sure that you have it at either 25%, so you see um, the detail here is much nicer at 25% versus maybe 27%. For some reason, you can see it right here, um, the detail at 25, 50, 75, and 100% are always better. So anyhow, um, yeah, you can come in here and scale it up. So I'm gonna leave it at 100. And another thing you can do is maybe add a color overlay as well. So I'm going to select color overlay. Make sure that you have this set to color, your blend mode set to color, and then you can choose any color you like. For me, I like pinks, orangey pinks. So I'm going to choose that, more like a copper look for mine. Click OK. And there you have it. And that was how to create crushed aluminum in Photoshop from scratch using filters. If you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get notified every single time we have a video like this one. And make sure to go to my website at prettywebs.com for even more tutorials freebies and resources. Until next time, thanks for watching.